Yu-Gi-Oh! is one of the most iconic shows of all time. Teach Kaiba respect for the heart of the cards, Yugi. But Grandpa, you need help. I've got to get you to a doctor. Sounds like an excuse. But the animators have a secret. They cheated. And you might not like that, but here's the thing. In animation, cheating isn't bad. Cheating is actually awesome. It takes creativity and ingenuity, so if you can find a shortcut, go ahead and use it. Because animation isn't actually about good or bad. The time, energy, and budget it takes to create animation can make high-quality production really slow. So animation's not about quality, instead it's about a balance between quality and production. When you're making an animated feature film over the course of several years, a professional studio can afford to spend some extra time to make it look good. But when the Yu-Gi-Oh! studio has to crank out 50 episodes, it's just not doable. Unless they cheat. But before we talk about how they cheat, we have to understand what not cheating looks like. When we talk about high quality animation, what does it look like? The first thing high quality animation is, is traditional animation, hand drawn. Typically keyframe to keyframe with tweens drawn between them. Other kinds of animation such as 3D animation or the salad finger style are typically less optimal in terms of how they look, but they do save a lot of time. As far as frame rate, film is typically shot at 24 frames per second. So for animation, this would be our dream target. But since animation's hard, most animations are done at 12, which is the lowest frame rate you can go without having the animation start to look stiff. Note that technically the animation's video output is 24 frames per second usually, but most of the animation is done on twos, which means they're actually drawing 12 images per second and holding each image for two frames. One last important aspect to talk about involves animation uptime and downtime. These aren't technical terms, so use it at your own risk, but the concepts are very important. Uptime is how often animation is actually happening. Take a look at a Disney movie and you'll see that the uptime is very high. And there, my faithful huntsman, you will kill her. But your majesty! On the other hand, downtime is whenever the characters are still. Compared to Disney movies, animes have much more downtime due to smaller budgets and harsher deadlines. The downside to downtime is that the world feels stiffer, and if there's too much, the audience is going to notice or just get bored. Interestingly, someone like Vune actually masks her downtime by using two-frame loops instead of having the characters be still. Altogether, this is what we look for in high-quality animation. Hand-drawn traditional animation at 12 frames per second or higher with high uptime. This is the animation that's going to look the best. But if you've ever tried animation, you know it's super hard. And this level of animation just isn't doable for independent animators that want any level of production. And that's okay. So for these animators, or you, or the Yu-Gi-Oh! Studio, sometimes you gotta cheat. Is this a trick? Yeah, what's he up to? The first way they cheat might seem kinda weird. Because the first way they cheat is by not animating at all. Okay, obviously they do animate sometimes, but trying to animate absolutely everything can get exhausting. So the Yu-Gi-Oh! animators do everything in their power not to whenever they can. But not animating can often lead to high downtime and the audience getting bored. So they have to find other ways to create visual interest. Part of this is creating motion without animation. Translation, which is moving a still image across the screen, and rotation are easy ways to do this. They'll often translate images that are at different depths at different speeds in order to mimic a camera panning. This creates a dynamic, interesting shot without any new frames needing to be drawn. In order to take advantage of these techniques, the motion needs to be kept parallel to the frame. If you have a car in the scene, make sure it's oriented parallel so that the wheel can just be rotated around. If the car were at an angle, you wouldn't be able to do this. 
Outside of motion, there are also several fun effects that they use. Inverted colors, split screen, and several CGI effects whenever monsters spawn or die. These look cool and add visual interest, but the animators don't have to draw any new frames. But even when there is animation, the animators often try to minimize the amount of frames they need to draw. Sometimes that's two frame loops of lighting. Other times, it's copy and pasting one frame over and over. The second way the Yu-Gi-Oh! animators cheated isn't even in the animation studio. It's in the writer's room. Surprised? Did you think your grandfather was the only one to possess a blue-eyes white dragon? Writers are often taught a simple concept. Show, don't tell. And for authors and screenwriters, it's a great tip. But for animators, it's an absolute horror show. Because showing involves action. And action involves a lot of animation. But telling, and <laughs> telling is hella easy. Just animate the mouth moving up and down, and you're good to go. Quit your stalling, Yugi, or you will forfeit the match. I never forfeit! So if you're writing a story that's going to be animated, you need to remember the exact opposite. Tell, don't show. Trust me, your animators will thank you. Now, yes, the Yu-Gi-Oh! animators did not write the story. But the story often involving dialogue is incredibly useful for them. Whenever the characters are talking, the model goes still while the mouth moves. This means that the model has a lot of animation downtime, which is great for the animators, and the downside of downtime being boring is masked by whatever interesting thing they're saying. Now, does this shop have any worthwhile cards or not? Hey. Oh, hey. Can it be the blue eyes white dragon in a dump like this? So by having story told through dialogue rather than action, animating the whole episode becomes much, much easier. But we can't always avoid action. Which brings me to the third way they cheated. The Yu-Gi-Oh! animators embraced the power of the premise. So I've already stated that action in animation takes a lot of work. But if we ignore the downsides, what does good action look like? Contrary to what you might expect, it's not about awesome explosions or epic super moves, although they are awesome. Rather, good action is good story. Only a little. And I don't just mean the story behind it. I also mean the story of the fight itself. Because good action is clear and distinct enough that you can follow the different beats and turning points of the fight, so that when the victor stands alone, you know why he won. Having this kind of fight animated is awesome, but a lot of work. And when you've got 50 episodes, it's hard to keep up. So what do the Yu-Gi-Oh! animators do? They embrace the power of the premise. The premise being an ancient Egyptian magic card game. And the action within this card game is governed not by slashes or magic blasts, but by numbers. And my faith rewards me with Gaia, the fierce knight, with a destructive power of 2300! <sighs> Yes, these monsters do have swords and staves, and if the animators wanted to, they could animate more detailed fights with each attack. But they don't. Each attack is very simple, and any animation is usually pretty small, and sometimes even the slashes are just animated abstractly. The reason why the animators can get away with this is because we, the audience, already understand why one monster won. It had the bigger number. Since we don't need the action to tell us why it won, we don't need clear and distinct animation. And since we don't need it, the animators don't do it. So by understanding and embracing the premise they have, the animators figured out how to save a ton of time by simply animating far less than any other show would require for its action. When we take a step back and look at the Yu-Gi-Oh! animation, it doesn't stand up to that dream standard. But it could have met that standard if they had spent more time and effort. Everything within the show could have been done better. All of these computer effects would still look nicer if they were hand drawn. And all the animation would look a lot nicer with more uptime and higher frame rates. But here's the thing. 
If the animators had put in the time and effort to accomplish the perfect standard of animation, they'd be fucking morons. Because they wouldn't have met their deadlines, they'd be way over budget, and the show would have died right then and there. What have you done? Perfect animation is fun to think about, but it's usually not doable. And that's okay. So animating isn't about making the best thing ever. It's about finding as many ways to cheat as possible, so that you can make that awesome story you've always wanted to. Draw your last pathetic card so I can end this, Yugi. My grandpa's deck has no pathetic cards, Kaiba. Exodia! Obliterate!